So let's go see the home of this man. So here's, this used to be Clark Gable's house. Um, he bought this in 1939 uh, from Raoul Walsh, the director, and it actually used to be 20 acres of uh, property. It was fields, ranches, and alfalfa fields and different things. And um, this was actually the original driveway that Clark Gable used to drive in. They used to call this the House of Two Gables. It was sold to developers years after he died and they've turned it into a really nice housing community and all the streets are named after um, different things from Gone with the Wind. One thing I didn't want to miss was that if you see that archway up there, there's an archway beyond the gates. That was the actual entrance to the original house. Right there. That was the original house. And it's still the same house. I think it's a few less bedrooms for some reason, but it is the same house as uh, when Clark lived here. There's a famous picture of Clark and Carol right there in that archway, and I'll see if I can add it to this vlog. Um, Clark actually actually suffered a heart attack in that driveway. He was changing a tractor tire. Um, he lived there for 20 years, over 20 years, and was changing a tractor tire, had a heart attack, didn't go to the hospital, uh, went to sleep, and then the next day went to the hospital and died in the hospital. Um, but, I mean, pretty incredible. The guy lived here over 20 years. This was, from everything I read, this was his favorite home that he lived in. Clark grew up without a, I mean, it was basically his dad and him. His mom died when he was a kid, and they kind of drifted around to houses and different jobs, so he never really had much of a home um, until this one. This was, uh, I don't know, I forget what it was called, Gable Acres or something, but he bought it for $50,000 for 20 acres in 1939. Um, would have been shortly after Gone with the Wind was filmed. So there it is. Um, now, ironically, I did work at the Jerry's Deli in Beverly Hills, and when I was uh, making all the turns that the GPS was having me to make to get here, um, the street that you turn on, which was the original street that, that uh, Clark Gable lived on, which was called Pettit, that was the name of the street before, before they turned it into this development. On the corner of Pettit was a Jerry's Deli. Now, the ironic thing about Jerry's Deli is that uh, when I was younger and... Uh, <clears throat> had lost a job, I, uh, a friend of mine got me a job at Jerry's Deli because I was in a band and she said, you'll be able to get your music to like record labels through working at Jerry's. They come in there all the time. And um, at that time I ended up meeting a famous actress, or she was really famous in her day, her name was Shelley Winters. She was Marilyn Monroe's best friend and roommate. Um, she became one of my best friends, actually. And um, Shelley... Since I met her at uh, Jerry's Deli, and we saw the Jerry's Deli, it reminded me of a very funny Clark Gable story that she had. Uh, when she was very new to Hollywood, probably like, I think she was like her first or second year, she was really young. She had, um, she was a young starlet and was asked to go on a double date with Yvonne DiCarlo, some of you know her as Lily Munster, and Errol Flynn and Clark Gable. So the four of them ended up going on a double date to Errol Flynn's house, from what Shelly told me. Shelly didn't know which guy was interested in her and which one she was interested in, so Yvonne DiCarlo and her went to the bathroom at Errol's house, and Yvonne DiCarlo talked her into going with Errol, saying that, well, Clark's been with everybody, you'll have your time with him, why not go for Errol? Errol's very rarely single, and, and he seems to like you. And what she said she found out later was that just Yvonne DiCarlo really wanted Clark Gable to herself. But they decided, uh, Errol Flynn and Clark Gable were good friends at that time, and they decided they were going to make Shelly a household name. So they arranged, without Shelly knowing, to throw a party in her honor. Uh, but what they did was they threw a party, and the plan was that Clark Gable would go to Shelly's house, well, her apartment that she shared with her parents, pick her up and bring her to the party, which they did and uh, Shelly's family got to meet Clark, who was a huge star at the time, and they just loved him to death. 
and Shelley had always had a dream of marrying Clark Gable, so it was amazing for her. So they go to the party, they're there for a while dancing. Uh, I forget, I believe Clark was slow dancing with Shelly. Errol came up, tapped him on the shoulder to cut in. They got into a fight. Somebody comes and whisks Shelly away and takes her home uh, so that she doesn't see the fight. And the next day when she wakes up in the newspaper, it says, Young Starlet Shelly Winters is, or Errol Flynn and Clark Gable get into fist fight at, at party over Young Starlet Shelly Winters. And it made her a household name. So, I don't know. I just thought I would tell you that story because most people wouldn't know something like that. And they ended up telling her later that they did it just just for her, just to make her famous. They, they both really liked her personality. She was cool, and she really was cool. She was cool to me. She, um, she's the reason that I probably still live out in Los Angeles. 